<laughs> Hi everybody, welcome to this week's Ghetto Vlog. And it feels like it's been a while since I've said that here in the 3.0. Um, yeah, it's been a weird one. I've had like a week without vlogging. Um, with last week's vlog being made up of the madness that was my weekend trip away, I uh, actually had a rare few days to myself. There's been a lot of game playing, um, a lot of uh, doing real world things that have been put on the back burner. And yeah, man, feeling good, feeling refreshed. And as a result of my break, we have got a lot to be cracking on with this week. As you can see here, I don't know, there's like 10 or more parcels that need opening, so we're gonna get to that real soon. We're going on a big game hunt. I'm still sort of in the process of planning that. And there's gonna be the montage of all montages, because not only have we got all that to open, we've got all of this stuff to get put away. So that's kind of the priority, right? Open the parcels, get the games all put on the shelves, and then we can look ahead to this week's game hunting and all the other stuff that we've got planned. So let's just get straight into it. Uh, right, okay, so. Let's get into it, shall we? Uh, like I said, there's about 10 parcels or so here. Um, a few of these are gifts. Hopefully people have sent me notes because as I said, there's a lot to get through. I, I don't remember everything or where it's come from. So hopefully there's notes in here. First thing I'll show you actually is this. Nothing exciting. It's just my uh, charity shop find. Haven't been to too many charity shops in the last week or so. I've just been really busy. Um, so yeah, my finds have been somewhat limited, but I did find a copy of Watch Dogs. It was only a pound. I think the only reason I bought this is like out of loyalty, stroke guilt. Uh, the woman said she kept a game for me in the back. She came out with this. I don't think I owned it. It was a pound. So yeah, I mean, it's a pound. What are you going to do? So that is that stunning addition. Uh, hopefully they get better from there. Right. Okay. So this first one, I believe is going to hopefully end a bit of a saga. So a couple of vlogs ago now, I purchased this from CEX. And they robbed me. <laughs> I say they robbed me. That's sort of like YouTuber over exaggeration <laughs> talk for they forgot to put the games in basically. Uh, I bought it in store in Litchfield, got home, my own fault, probably should have checked it outside or when I got it and there was no discs inside it. So shout out to my man Minesh, the CEX manager extraordinaire. Uh, he sorted it out for me. He facilitated. This came straight through uh, as a special delivery. So. It's been here a while now, but I'm assuming they haven't messed up twice. Um, the key thing is that they sent both discs. Yeah, it's in the God of War 2 Special Edition sleeve. Yeah, so we've got both discs, the bonus disc, which is obviously crucial for this. So we can now add this to the pile of games that need to go into the montage. And what is also in here is a bonus DVD, which has like the making of God of War 2. And obviously being such a huge God of War fan, that's going to be a must watch for me. So yeah, I'm very excited to watch that right okay so i think that is most of the sort of admin -y stuff out the way now it's just time to get into these uh, most of these still have my address on so if i seem like i'm holding them in an awkward way it's just to sort of like um keep my address uh to myself um but yeah let's uh, get into them like i said i've got no idea what these are for the most part you know i love that you guys are trying to help me predominantly with my ps3 essentials journey and like I've said before, I I'm more than happy for you guys to help because not only do I get like a nice note and nice sentiment attached to some of these games to complete the collection, but also they're quite cheap. A lot of you sort of had these in your collection, you don't really want them because you don't collect essentials and you know they can stick out like a sore thumb if they're not something that you're actively collecting and yeah, um, you know, it's much, much appreciated. So let's get into it, shall we? So this is the first one and it looks like it's got a note, right? So that's, uh, that's a good start. Let's get into it. I remember this anyway i believe this is from sam yeah right okay so hi callum myself and my partner have just recently bought our first house together massive congratulations sam i remember when i first bought my house with my partner man it's like it's just a great feeling that relief and um this looks like a nice foundation right with which to start the rest of your lives basically so massive congratulations to you both uh, so when moving stuff, we found this sealed game in her collection and we both thought it would make a great addition to your essentials collection instead. As always, creep up the great work. Thanks from Sam. Thank you, Sam. Thank you, Sam's partner. Uh, actually, not this is. I remember him messaging me about this. So this is a game I already own. Uh, Kingdom Hearts 1.5 Remix, but sealed, sealed copy. We will take that all day long. Um, I've said before, what I'm going to do with duplicates is give them away. So like 
obviously as I go through this essentials journey there will be some duplicates start to amass and I'm just going to wait till I've got like a good pile of them and then I'm going to do like a giveaway and to any of you guys out there that are starting your own essentials journey or you're just looking to build a PS3 collection uh, I'll do like a, a giveaway for you know all of my uh, spares basically so yeah nice to be added an additional sealed well sorry a sealed game to the essentials collection so again Sal and partner thank you very much and I shall find a way to keep this note with the game. Some nice packaging supplies as well by the end of this. Okay, so speaking of which, actually, I don't, I don't. I was going to talk about eBay. We're going to get to that later on because I've got a lot to say. Right, next, these are in no kind of order. I don't know what's going on with these. Um, don't know who this is from. Don't know what this is. So let's find out together. Okay, so. Is there a note? Oh man, it doesn't look like there's a note. No note. No note with this one. What I will do is try and find out um, who sent me what and try and like, you know, give you guys the relevant shout out on screen as I'm gonna go through them. Uh, but that is Ghost Recon, one that I do need for the collection. Um, yeah, nice red essentials disc. A game I've never played, uh, Ghost Recon. Advanced Warfighter. So yeah, another one off the essentials list. Next up, let's see what's in here. Right, okay, this does contain a note. So let's go to the note first. <clears throat> Hi Callum, just a small token of my appreciation. Your content is superb and genuinely something I look forward to each week. Guys, honestly, like, sometimes when you sit here, I sit here and like get these sort of notes and people send me this stuff. It's sometimes hard to convey how much it means to you. It really is. I used to like, before I started filming stuff myself, I used to watch like these massive American channels and they'd do like these hour long videos of just opening parcels from people. And I don't know, they'd have like a little cry at the end about how much love they feel and whatnot. And I used to just sit there and think, yeah, all right, mate. Right. <laughs> but genuinely just always know how appreciated it is. Um, there's only just so many ways that you can convey it or so many ways that you can um, put it into words basically. But I just want to say thank you. Anyway, so yeah, appreciate you watching my friend. Appreciate you looking forward to it. Not really the best game I can pass on to you, but hopefully a necessary help on the essentials hunt. Here's to a happy and healthy 2024 to you and yours. All the best mate, Stuart. Stuart, top man, friend of the channel. Um, so, let's see what game Stuart's put in here. Oh, what are you talking about, Stuart? This is, this was game of the year, wasn't it? <laughs> I Pet and Friends. Uh, one pound game from CEX. It doesn't matter how good or how bad the title is. It's another one off the essentials list. I didn't own this. And uh, you know what? That letter inside it, the sentimental value is up there. So we'll pop this inside. There's a lot of stickers to get off. Stuart, much appreciated my friend. Another one off the PS3 Essentials list. The only problem with this and people helping out is I'm just gonna be done too quick. I don't wanna get it completed too fast because then what am I gonna do, right? I'm an addict, I need a fix, I need something to collect. So yeah, uh, it will get harder though. As time goes on, they will become more rare and more expensive. Uh, this one is a purchase, uh, an eBay purchase. Ooh, hello. Have I just cut myself? I don't think I have. I think I got lucky. My uh, Stanley has not been put together properly. And the blade, and if you can see it, was sticking out the bottom there. My finger just caught it. Luckily, it didn't slice me open. So, on that note, <laughs> carefully open these. I think, yeah, both of these are the same. I'm going to open them both and then we're going to discuss why. I took to eBay for these because I think this is going to be quite useful information to uh, a lot of you guys out there that are on a similar pursuit. So both of these games, as I say, were ordered from eBay. They both cost me like five pound posted. And uh, you know, I've said before that I don't want to take to eBay to do the essential set and that what I'm trying to do is find them in person or with the help of you guys um, with the notes attached etc. However, when I recently acquired the PSV Essentials list and I was going through it, 
I was thinking to myself, there's like all the FIFAs. And I thought to myself, I've never seen an Essentials copy of a FIFA game, ever. Never seen one, not on internet, not in CEX, not in store, nowhere. So I looked into it a bit deeper and they only came out in other territories. So FIFAs were only released as Essentials in sort of all the European territories. So the chances of me finding one on the shelves are very, very slim. Uh, slim to none, should we say. So I sort of took to eBay to find a few and uh, I've managed to pick up a couple for five pounds. There's still a few more that I need, but if you are going for a PSV Essential set, it is worth noting that, yeah, the FIFA games, um, you're gonna need to pick up European copies. These are both sealed as well. So I picked up FIFA 13. This is the Polish version. Uh, thankfully though, the, uh, the spines are exactly the same. So still got that uniformity. Um, this has got Messi and Royce on the front. I'd have liked it if it had like a Polish player on the front. That would have been cool, right? If it had like uh, Lewandowski or somebody. But uh, yeah, so that's the Polish version of FIFA 13. And then I've got what I believe is... I don't know, what version is this? So this is FIFA 14. And I think this is Dutch. Yeah, this one's Dutch, I believe. It's messy, but it looks weird, doesn't it? Is it just me or does that picture look odd? Like, it doesn't even really look like Messi. But uh, yeah, this is the Dutch version. It sort of highlights the Eredivisie, which is the uh, Dutch Premier League. And again, sealed 2014. But there are multiple variants. I'm not going to buy them all, but you can get like Italian ones. And, you know, um, yeah, there's loads of different regions which did FIFA in essentials, just not here in the UK. The logic of it doesn't make sense to me because surely everyone buys FIFA at launch and then they move on to the next one. So I don't know at what point it would become an essential. Maybe that's why it didn't come out in the UK. Maybe the shopping habits in other European countries are different. I'm not sure, but yeah. Um, two more ticked off the essentials list. FIFA 13, FIFA 14. Uh, I now need to get onto eBay and get the rest of these. Especially now I've made everybody aware um, that you need to be picking these up, right? So yeah, try and get that sorted out before this video goes live because I fell victim of myself uh, many times before. Uh, right, so let's move on. Um, another one, which I believe is a gift. What we got? There's a note. There's a note. Okay, so. <clears throat> Hi, Calm. Just a quick note to say thank you for all the hard work and commitment you put into your content to share with us all. As previously mentioned, I've had a tough last 12 months. <laughs> Right, okay, so this is quite a heartfelt note. Um, this is from Stephen, and it's sort of, I'm not gonna go into it in detail, but it basically um, is uh, explaining that he's not at the best of times, but now he's doing much better. And um, yeah, uh, shout out to Stephen. Much appreciated, my friend. This is, uh, you know, I really appreciate the words in here. And uh, he sent me a copy of Pirates of the Caribbean, the video game. This was the last Lego game I believe that I needed. Uh, for the essentials range um, so yeah man much appreciated my friend uh, I'll message you directly in response to your letter and then this one I know who this is <laughs> a friend of the channel Brad oh, I've got to be careful with this knife it's getting worse yeah this this is not good I nearly just cut my sofa last thing I want to be buying a new sofa right <laughs> I'm here opening like five pound games and end up needing a new sofa that's that's not good economics <laughs> right, okay. So this is from a friend of the channel, Brad. Massive shout out as always to Brad, the kindest man in the collecting scene. And Brad has sent me, I think he found this in CEX. He messaged me asking me if I'd got it. I said no. I tried to send him money, he wouldn't have it. I tried to send him postage, he wouldn't have it. I do have a pile of things for Brad. We are going to meet up soon uh, at a game fair, a uh, toy fair, hopefully. And that is uh, one I've never seen in person, and that is Avatar the Game, um, a game I've never played. I think this is quite an interesting title, from what I understand, you can play as both the Avatar or as the quote-unquote bad guys, so I think the game is very different. I think you can play like, um, like I say, as either side of the faction, and then the gameplay and everything sort of changes depending on who you pick, so that's quite a, um, an interesting sort of twist on it, but yeah, uh, Avatar the Game. It's one of those games or franchises that you can imagine would have a very big, very successful game. This never quite hit the heights, right? But you can imagine with the success of the movies and like how visually stunning they are that you won't be surprised if there was like a blockbuster game that came out with one down the line. But yeah, as always, Brad, you're a gentleman. That is much appreciated. And uh, yeah, man, this PS3 stack here. I didn't know they were all essentials. 
Uh, <laughs> uh, and that takes me to what is the last parcel. The last parcel I want to discuss for now, anyway. We're going to get to the other one. We will get to the other one. Right, okay, what is this? This looks like a thick, a thick boy here. And a note. Okay, to Callum, as a thank you for the many hours of entertainment, please accept these PS3 Essentials titles. Keep up the great work with the channel. Looking forward to many more hours. Steve Daly, gang member. Shout out to the Ghetto Gang. Shout out to Steve. Awesome, man. Much appreciated, Steve. Uh, right, okay, so I'll, uh, I'll message on the Discord. But there is one, two, three, four games in here. So let's see what we've got. FIFA Street. So whilst we're on the subject of FIFAs, I should have said really, uh, right on time, FIFA Street is the only FIFA that got a PS3 Essentials release here in the UK to my knowledge, so that's awesome. Lego Movie Video Game. Do I still need this? I think I do need this. So when I say that all the Lego games, that might now be all the Lego games. Little Big Planet. I feel like I might already have this one. That might be one for the duplicates pile. And one I do own, but again, this is a sealed version. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it's still got the. Did you rob this, mate? <laughs> it's still got the security tag on it. Um, I mean, I, I <laughs> does this, this one end up down your trousers, mate? <laughs> oh, I love that. I'm leaving that on. Um, I do have all the Assassin's Creed games on Essentials now, I think there's about eight of them. Um, but again, a sealed one will get swapped out, which means one gets put up the pile for someone to get given away. And I'm really looking forward to doing the giveaway, actually. Um, we're going to make sure we have a nice pile to sort of like thank you guys, because obviously the generosity of the viewers in helping me with it would be nice to give something back to somebody uh, in helping them start or continue with their journey. And Wow, when I said there was a lot of PS3 Essentials here, I didn't know it was going to be all PS3 Essentials. Um, that is a fat stack of PS3 Essentials. And I think as a result of this, we're gonna have to do some rearranging. Like I say, we're gonna jump straight into now like one epic montage with all the games that have been adding very recently. The last few weeks has been madness for like how many games we've added. There's loads that need like cleaning, sorting out. Um, in the PlayStation 1 case, we've got like some uh, case swaps to do, stickers to remove and all that. So yeah, man, once again, massive thank you to everybody. Let's jump into the montage.
Okay, what was approximately two minutes for you was about two hours of putting games away for me. And you'll notice there's still the Xbox 360 games to put away. Now, the reason I haven't yet added them to my 360 area is because of that parcel that I alluded to earlier. I'm just waiting on slight further developments and then we can get into the whole saga that is my recent eBay 360 purchase. But uh, yeah, we'll get to the rest of this later in the vlog. Retro Ghetto. Okay, it's game hunt day, and you know what? I thought if I'm gonna do it, let's do it right. So I'm going to two of the best shops, hands down, in the country. I'm sat outside, old school gaming. Let's go see what they got.
as always, I'm leaving old school gaming with a bag full of games. Um, Right, okay, so we are back and pff, what a trip that ended up being. Um, I'll discuss what happened after Old School Gaming later on, but let's go through the pickups uh, from Old School Gaming first. So, before that actually, um, let's have a look at what I picked up at a charity shop. So on the way home, I nicked in the local. They didn't have any games for me, but they had had some Blu-rays in. Uh, this shop only charges £1 for all media. This was a movie that I remember I watched when it came out because it's sort of like everything that I thought I would enjoy. I remember not being overly impressed with it, but it's been such a long time. I only watched it once when it was released. And for a pound, I thought, you know what, I'm going to give it another go. Uh, and that is The Immortals. I think because it was made by the producers of 300, I kind of went into it expecting something as good as 300. This wasn't that. Um, but now going into it with sort of lesser expectations, I might enjoy it a bit more. But like I say, it's the sort of subject matter that I really enjoy in movies. So... Uh, for a pan, I mean, I figured I can't really go wrong because I picked up Immortals and it's got a sleeve cover. Not that I collect Blu-rays, but yeah, so that's that. But uh, as always, um, old school gaming, full of fantastic stuff. Shout out to Owner Rich, top man. And uh, I got some really good stuff, actually. So let's go into it. Um, yeah, we'll start here. So first thing I found was a... PS3 Essential um, seems to be the theme of the video. I can think I said previously, or oh, twice I think I've said in this video already, that's all the Lego games. Well, it wasn't. <laughs> uh, I noticed when I was putting them away when I did my montage that I was missing Indiana Jones, the original one. Uh, I've got Indiana Jones 2. Uh, so I've now got both the Indiana Jones. And I think that's... No, I'm not even going to say it. I'm not going to say that's all the Lego ones because there's probably still another one. Um, but yeah, another one ticked off the list, which is nice. And um, I also picked up uh, an Xbox 360 game. One that I've never really seen. Um, it's £8 at CEX. Rich had it for 6 I think probably ended up being cheaper than that by the time we bundled everything together. Uh, and that is Tetris Evolution. Don't know much about this one. Uh, on the back it just says, get ready to take your Tetris game to the next level and beyond. Uh, Tetris Evolution features all new gameplay modes, multiple customizations, and Xbox Live features that will have you hooked for hours. Do you know what? I enjoy um, Tetris in most of its iterations and I just figured this would be a good game to play on the kiosk just want to stand up play see if I can beat my high score type game so yeah it's nice it's colorful I'm collecting for the 360 currently and uh, yeah I just thought I'd add that one to my pile by the way if I'm moving like this I don't want to my neck I'm just getting old basically guys but I woke up with my neck <laughs> in a bad way and it's not got any better oh my neck my back my neck in my back oh um, thankfully I was able to drive there and back like this. <laughs> thankfully there wasn't too many right turns so we survived. Um, right okay so the next one was a game I've heard a lot of good things about. I picked it up um, off the back of so many people telling me it was worth playing but I picked it up on the Xbox One, just a basic edition. This was really cheap and I saw the Steelbook version on the PS4 so I thought you know what, I'll pick up the Steelbook on the PS4, I can trade in my P uh, Xbox One version to make this literally cost next to nothing. So that is Mad Max and uh, that's the Ripper edition. So it comes in this really nice uh, Steelbook. Like I say I'm not a big PS4 collector but the vast majority of my PS4 collection is Steelbooks, collector's editions, that kind of thing. Uh, this actually comes with what looks like a poster. It's a really nice piece of artwork, this. Yeah, man, I didn't know this was in here. It's like a real thick card as well. High GSM paper. Look at that. That looks awesome, man. Love that. Um, yeah, like I say, I heard many, many good things about this game. Um, so I'm definitely going to be trying this out one day. And uh, you know me, guys. Having like a nice sort of steelbook edition like this just gives me that extra impetus to get it tried. So... We'll pop that in with the PS4 collection. And one of the other things that I saw, I already own it, but this was in such nice condition, I knew mine wasn't. And that is Super Mario Galaxy 2, but the sort of like big bundle edition. Rich did me such a good price on this that it cost me like a fiver, and I can trade mine in. Uh, sorry, it cost me a fiver once I traded mine in, sorry. Because um, like I say, I've got Mario Galaxy 2, I can take the game out, trade it to CEX, this will end up costing me like a fiver for this real clean uh, version of it. Uh, I'm really enjoying collecting Nintendo cardboard currently, and when I saw how clean this was, yeah, I just uh, I couldn't leave this one behind. Uh, I probably should have um, had a look at the game itself, right, and, and check the discs and whatnot, but uh, 
yeah, it's, it looks like it's never been played, to be honest. So, yeah, that was a nice little addition. I saw that on the way out of the shop. Um, I think twice I left the shop thinking I bought everything I wanted to buy and then ended up going back in and buying more things. But that's what happens at these fantastic shops. And this comes with a how to play DVD. Now, <laughs> I know that some, to some extent Mario games are encompassed for younger children as well, but I don't think anybody needs a how to play DVD when it comes to uh, Mario Galaxy 2, but one day I might pop it in, give it a watch, who knows. Okay, so before I get to what was probably my best pickup, you might have seen on the footage, um, Rich has had a lot of stuff in which is a varying condition. I think it's like a bit of a shed find. So some really nice bits, some are in better condition, and others, some are terrible. These I'm about to show you now are terrible, but he almost gave these away. And uh, do you know what I figured? I figured if nothing else, it would be good for me to try and fix them up, right? A bit of a fixer-upper. Uh, you guys know that I love trying to make the best of Nintendo cardboard, so it's like a real project that I've got here. Uh, so the first one is Super Goal. Now, as you can see, it's battered. It's not too bad, though. There's not really many rips. The corner's not great, but there's no like real dirt or damage on this. This should iron out, get a disc in it, Sorry, caught in it. And if you remember back to my Leeds uh, game hunt at the market, I think it's a clip of me and Theo, and I'm looking at this game and it's 40 quid, and I'm saying like only an idiot would collect full sets of Super Nintendo, because these are the kind of games that are 40 pound now. So yeah, um, it is box only, but if I can get this box in decent condition, which I think I should be able to do, I'll take that for the dirt cheap price that um, Rich gave it to me for all day long. And very much the same with this one, Another World. Just one of the games that I don't own. Um, I've just never wanted to pay the price for it that it was listed at. But again, there's no reason why I can't iron this, get it into like some sort of rigidity, get um, like the insert put into it, and then just pick up a cart down the line. Manual, whatever. If I farm on a fine one, I mean, it's cost me next to nothing. So uh, that's that. This next one is the worst of the bunch. But it did come with the game, so I've got the cartridge for this. This is one of them games that when I first started collecting Super Nintendo six, seven, eight years ago, not first, but this iteration that you see in here, this collection, this was like a £10 game. Now it's like £35, and I just do not want to pay £35 for this game. So when I saw this, I was like, yeah, throw that on as well, and I saw that he had a loose cart, so I was like, yeah, put a cart with it. And that is Pierre Le Chef Out to Lunch, okay? So you might be looking at it thinking, well, it don't look great, it's not too bad. But, I mean, I didn't really realise, if I'm being honest, until I got back. This thing is nasty. There's all mould inside it. This one might end up in the bin. I'm not 100% about this. Um, but, the way, way I see it is, I might try and open it up. So I might try and like use a heat on the, on the cardboard itself, open it, and try and use like antiseptic wipes like disinfectant wipes on the inside, really go to town on the inside of the cardboard. It doesn't matter if I take off the top layer of the cardboard on the inside. And uh, yeah, just see what happens. I'm in for a penny, out for a pound, right? And that, is that the saying? <laughs> it's something like that, right? But the way I see it is if it doesn't work out, who cares? They cost me next to nothing. Um, but it might be a fun project to try and fix these up. But yeah, as it stands, I don't even want this in my game room. I need to wash my hands. <laughs> as soon as I come off this video, because yeah, this is nasty, but uh, yeah, it's worth a punt, right? And uh, like I say, I, I got the cartridge with that one. And if I do manage to fix it up, well, it's £35. I'm not going to have to spend on Pierre Le Chef out to lunch at any point in the future. So my uh, probably the best pickup I got from Rich uh, was a game which I thought I needed. Um, I don't know anymore after sort of doing a bit more research. Uh, and that is Herzog 2, which is German for Duke 2. Uh, this was developed by Technosoft, which you'll be seeing on screen now, shares a resemblance with another Technosoft game, the Thunder Force series, which is one of my favourite series on the system. The thing is, I always thought this was a shmup, but it's kind of more of a strategy game, I believe. It's got shmup elements to it, but if you look at Wikipedia and stuff, they describe it as a real-time strategy game. There's definitely shmup elements, there's definitely real-time strategy elements. I think it's like a bit of both. You sort of pilot uh, a transforming mech and there are very, very simple um, strategy elements to it in terms of like you can control other troops to attack, uh, defend, you know, very basic strategy, things like that. But from what I've seen, it's quite a fun game uh, and a good introduction to both real-time strategy games and uh, the simplicity of certain shmup elements. So, yeah, I don't know if this is what I need for the full Mega Drive shmup set, but it's that kind of grey area. 
So for me, I felt like I needed to have it. I'm going to put it on the end of the shmups. So it's kind of like in that grey area of is it a shmup, isn't it a shmup? I don't know. But I'm covering all bases, um, figuratively and artistically. And uh, yeah, so uh, it's beautiful box art on this one as well. Again, uh, I think this is one that was found. It's not in the best condition. Uh, it's definitely had some water damage on it. But um, this is not a cheap game. And uh, Rich did me an absolutely fantastic price on this, as he did with everything today. So uh, yeah, I'm more than happy to, for that. And you know me, guys, I'm not a mint collector. If I can get an absolute bargain uh, with the condition taking a hit, then I'll do that. That's just the way I like to collect and how cheap I am. But uh, yeah, really happy with that. Again, shout out to Rich. Uh, for all the deals and you may be sitting there thinking surely if I went to old school gaming I went to vintage gamer I mean they're so close in proximity they're two of the best game stores in the country in my opinion I did and it's a madness I've spent more money at vintage gamer than I think I've ever spent actually yeah hands down I spent more money at vintage gamer than I've ever spent in a video game shop in my life um, it's gonna be the Wednesday video there's a lot to discuss, there's so much to get through that, yeah, I think it'll be doing it a disservice if I didn't give it its full video. So that's going to be Wednesday. Do not miss that because a lot of amazing pickups, but one thing in particular, yeah, uh, it's the literally the biggest and also the most expensive thing I've picked up maybe ever in a long, long time. But yeah, that'll be Wednesday, so keep it locked for that. Um, but right in the meantime, I'm actually going to do some video game playing tonight, which is nice. And... Tomorrow is the date in which I get some confirmation to close the chapter and the story on that parcel uh, 360 piece that I've ordered that I keep alluding to. So tomorrow we're going to get into all that as well. But uh, until then, I'm going to do some gaming in a bit. So I've been talking for a while now about having a Nintendo Wii day. I think today is finally that day. I've been out and bought a load of batteries for the Wiimote. There's loads of games I want to play, so let's make a pile and let's get into it. Okay, so these are the first few games that grab my attention that I want to play. I think we're going to start nice and relaxing this morning. I think we're going to try a bit of fishing frenzy. Okay, so I'm all set up. This is pretty much what puts me off doing this, is the amount of peripherals and stuff I have to dig out, find, get ready. <laughs> I mean, I've got a couple more with this fishing rod, but <laughs> let's get into it. Let's go fishing. Okay, so we're going with a bit of open fishing. I just want to see how it works. I don't even know. It doesn't even tell you where or how to use this thing. Um, I don't even know what I'm doing with this. I'm all set. <laughs> Although I've got no idea what. <laughs> any of this does. I can't... Well, let's just go for it. Right, we're fishing. I think. Good cast. Good cast. Okay. Now oh, what? Oh. What's this guy doing? What do I do? What do I do? <laughs> Reel in the lure to bring in the fish. Use the lure and increase the chances of a catch. What? What's the lure? Is that that? I don't know what I'm doing. What am I doing? I'm really... <laughs> what do I do? Ah! Like that. Like that. What the... <laughs> What the hell do I do? Ah! Next time. I don't know. <laughs> I ain't got a clue here. I don't see how this can be affecting the nunchuk either. Like, it don't make any sense. Does this connect? Am I doing something wrong here? It doesn't make any sense. I don't know what I'm doing. I really don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> oh my days. What am I doing? I'm just... <laughs> I'm just wagging it about. We've all been there. What am I doing? 
What do you mean, wheel out? Oh, forget it. Forget it. Right, okay, so it's fair to say my first foray into the world of Nintendo Wii has not gone well. Um, Rapala's Fishing Frenzy has disappointed me. It's not very intuitive. I've not got a clue. I, I had it set so it's supposed to tell you what to do, but I couldn't work it out. And to be honest, from what I did see of it, I'm not that interested. I'm disappointed. This game sold me down the river, pardon the pun. But look at the box art. I thought it was going to be like a nice cartoony... Um, like arcade style fun fishing game, not like an op, like a. This is more of a simulator. I'm not a fisherman. You've probably guessed. <laughs> but yeah, I feel like it's not what it says it was. Looking at it now on the box, I didn't have it set up right. I should have looked at that right. The nunchuck fits into that, and then you like wheel it round. But like I say, it's not the game I was expecting. I've seen enough. On to the next. <clears throat> Even trying to put this stuff back is confusing. I am never touching Rapala's fishing again in my life. Right, next up is a game I've been wanting to play for a long time, and that is Dragon Ball Revenge of King Piccolo. I mentioned this on, I think it was a Games to Invest in video years ago. This game had me, a lot of people mad at me. <laughs> Not for the first time. I got accused of putting the price up. And people telling me they were going to buy it, and now it's out of stock and all that kind of jazz, even though they've had since... 2009 to purchase it. Anyway, it is Dragon Ball Revenge of King Piccolo. It's one of them games, it's uncommon, it's quite hard to find. Um, commands a bit of a price, you're looking at £30, £35 now, which is not cheap for a Wii game. It's like a 2D Dragon Ball game, like with platforming elements. It's just one of them games that looks great. I've been wanting to play this for a long time, don't know why it's taken me so long, but there's never been a better time than on Wii Day, so let's do it. Hopefully, mate. Safety first. Awesome. So, right, we're going to play this with the classic controller, I think. Does that mean there's no motion things? We'll figure that out, will we? I'll try and put it in my pocket. So that people play with it. <laughs> what am I doing with my life? Right, so it's like what I'd call a 2.5D. It looks like a straight 2D, but there's a little bit of depth to it. By depth, I mean on the plane, not in terms of the storyline. Hame, hame! Have that! I really enjoyed that. As you can see, I cleared the first stage, beat a boss, got myself a Dragon Ball. Um, yeah, really good fun actually. I think it always helps with Wii games when you don't use the motion. I was playing on the classic Pro Controller. Um, Really fun game. Takes a little bit of time just to get used to the buttons or the layout's a little bit odd, but probably because it's mapped for um, like a Wii uh, remote rather than an actual controller. But really good fun because it's in like a 2.5D plane. Sometimes it doesn't quite lock onto the enemies, but say once you get used to it, and it, if you're a fan of Dragon Ball, this is a must. It plays like uh, an episode, a lot of narration, a lot of like anime cutscenes and stuff. And yeah, I can see why it's quite an expensive game. Um, definitely, like I say. If you're a fan of like platformers, I love colourful games like this. So yeah, it's right on my street. It's definitely one I could see myself playing again. I'll probably play with the little man because I watched a bit of Dragon Ball Z with him uh, a year or two ago. And he really enjoyed it. So yeah, man. Um, yeah, 
I would say definitely pick this one up if you're lucky enough to find it, but don't come at me saying I'll put the prices up again. <laughs> <laughs> on to the next one. Okay, so up next we've got another Wii game which isn't particularly cheap for the system. Uh, I think this is about £22, so about £25 poster. There's not too many copies of this uh, ever floating around. Uh, and this is Gunblade and LA Machine Guns. I think these were arcade games originally. I've never played either of these games before, but, I mean, light gun games really is where Wii comes into its own, right? So, this should be a good time. Right, I don't know which game to choose. Um, Gunblade, Special Air Assault Force, Rage of the Machines, LA Machine Guns. LA Machine Guns sounds a bit more badass, right? We'll go with that. Got no idea if I've chose the right one. See the president! Come in, Mr. President. Right, let's try Gunblade. I mean, the music's a banger. If not for now. Okay, so that was Gunblade NY Special Air Assault Force and LA Machine Guns. Um, very much of its era. I mean, I think 25, 30 years ago, you'd be amazed to think you could play this sort of games at home. Um, you know, it's very much that early sort of polygonal uh, 3D imaging. But you know what? You know what you're going to get with these kind of games. Um, light gun games on the Wii. Probably better multiplayer. Sort of think you'd have a good time if you have friends around just blasting everything in sight. Of the two, Gunblade seemed a bit more dated in terms of its visuals, but I personally prefer to shoot against like human beings as opposed to like robots and stuff. But um, I'd guess that Gunblade came out first. It did seem a bit more dated in its uh, presentation, but yeah, good fun. It is what it is. It'd probably be better with like a, a gun uh, accessory, like with a trigger. I think it'd be probably more fun that way. But yeah, what I expected. Um, but we move on to the next. Up next is a game that I've heard a lot of good things about. Um, that is. Wario Land Shake Dimension. This is one that I anticipated would keep going up in price, but it hasn't. You can get this for £10. Like I say, a lot of people say a lot of good things about this game. Uh, it looks like a platform, it looks like really good visuals, first party Nintendo game. Uh, I wouldn't go as far as to say it's uncommon, but you don't see it like all the time. I've never found one in a charity shop or anything like that. So, yeah man, let's see if it's uh, as good as people say. Right, I really enjoyed that. I ended up playing for a couple of levels. Could have easily played on for a few more. Um, but it is time now for Pandora's Tower. I left this for last because of all these games here, it's probably the least accessible, right? I think this is like um, an action RPG, so I don't think it's like a pick up and play like these games are. 
But uh, yeah, I'm happy to sit down for an hour or so. Want to try this one out. I always say, when I get these nice big boxes of things, it really gives me that impetus um, to sort of check them out, see what they're all about. Um, there's a beautiful art book in here as well. So yeah, let's jump into Pandora's Tower. Well, that was very grandiose. Elena, no doubt you plan to return to your old self as soon as humanly possible. <laughs> Hideous, no matter how many times you've seen it, it's beautiful. Oh, brutal. Brutal from the old dear. So this is what I find a bit jarring about these kind of games. You watch these beautiful cutscenes and then you get into the action and you're like, do I need to clean my glasses? Or <laughs> And this is running via HD on the Wii U. So in theory this should never look better. That's it. Your eyes do adjust eventually. Oh, lovely. <laughs> Get on with it, love. Get in there. Okay, that was very unexpected. Um, right, firstly then, let's talk about the last couple of games um, that I played. So, Wario Land The Shake Dimension, very impressed. I didn't put loads of time into it, I played for a couple of levels, the levels are quite short. I don't know why more people don't talk about this game. Whenever I've heard it mentioned, I've heard positive things about it. I mean, there's no, there's nothing new under the sun, right? I'm not going to say it's a hidden gem, it's a first party Mar uh, Nintendo game. But... It's like the Mario game I wanted on the Wii. They did release Mario Bros, but this is more of that kind of like 2D platforming, uh, very intuitive. It uses the motion controls, but not too much. Just slight little shakes and movements, nothing too major. You're not jumping around the, the room doing it. Very good game. Definitely one I hope to go back to. Hopefully one I can complete. You can do this in that six and a half hours, apparently. So this is one I would definitely like to play through. This has now been firmly added to my backlog. And uh, yeah, just... Very nice sort of cutscenes as well, like almost like little cartoon sections of Wario, and yeah, very, very. Even though I'd heard good things, very pleasantly surprised by it, and they're definitely one I'm going to be returning to. And that takes me to the last game. So, Pandora's Tower. Like I said, I went into it last because I thought, oh, it's going to be a, one of them games that's quite hard to get into. There's going to be loads of buttons and mechanics and things to learn, and cutscenes and whatnot. <sighs> Guys, I played it for two hours. I can't believe how much I enjoyed this game. Uh, I've got the uh, steel book here it come as part of that nice collector's edition that I purchased and I absolutely loved it. It, it allowed me to play uh, with the Wii Pro Controller which for me is always a bonus and what this does fantastically well is it adapts really well the way it maps the buttons over from what would be a Wii mote to this. It works seamlessly. Once you get used to the controls I was just loving it. I didn't want to put it down. Um, I ended up doing one of the towers. I think there's 13 towers. There's 12 or 13 towers to go through to ultimately um, ease your love interest of her curse. 
Stories are relevant. The gameplay was so good. So you have like this uh, sort of chain that you use to um, sort of reach things that you can't reach, also to extract flesh from the enemies and all kinds of stuff. Yeah, I never thought I'd be sitting here saying that I loved an action RPG on the Nintendo Wii. I, I never thought that would happen. I never thought this would be my favourite game of the games I've tried today. And I'm sitting here now thinking to myself, I just want to play it some more. Uh, I'm halfway, well, I don't know if I'm halfway through, but I'm currently playing Prince of Persia. Uh, I'm on the last level of uh, Mario 2 on the Game Boy. Those are the games I should be playing, but that's the danger of doing something like this. I just want to keep playing this. I absolutely loved it. Um, I just never thought I would. And I always say, right, play your games. And this is testament to that, that... Yeah, just picking a few games off the shelf, uh, ones that maybe you don't think you would end up enjoying or wanting to play. When I first put this on, I thought, oh, the visuals were like, oh, this ain't, this isn't like the HD I'm used to or anything like that. And yeah, just really, really good game. And, and I can't wait to see more of it. Uh, the artwork's fantastic. It comes with this beautiful art book and everything. And I think I'm going to put it back on. <laughs> That's how much I enjoyed it. And do you know what? This is one of many reasons why I love physical media collecting because I'm going to be completely honest if I hadn't purchased Pandora's Tower in this fantastic collector's edition with the beautiful steel book and art book and everything I probably would never have had the impetus to try this game and in doing so I think I've discovered a gem I, I really do uh, please let me know in the comments if you've played or played through Pandora's Tower I'd love to be able to talk to, talk to somebody about it uh, yeah but I think I'm going to put it back on thoroughly enjoyed uh, my Wii games, except for maybe fishing, that wasn't for me. Uh, I'll definitely play the uh, where is it? The Dragon Ball Revenge of King Piccolo again. That's a game that maybe I won't complete, maybe it'll get a bit samey. Uh, I'm not quite sure, I'd have to put a bit more time into it. But I think I'll definitely be finishing Wario Land and I'll definitely be playing more of, of Pandora's Tower as well. So, yeah, that was a success. But if you enjoyed this, let me know. Uh, there's still more Wii games I want to play, and I'd also like to do this probably for the Xbox 360 as well. There's loads of titles on that system that uh, I've been wanting to play for a long time, and maybe just having mornings like this, uh, I need to do it more often. But it can be dangerous, because if you're currently actively playing the game and you find a gem, then it's hard to tear yourself away. But uh, yeah, love that. Retro Ghetto. Good morning, all! Right, okay, so the day's finally come. I can tell my story. Um... It seems like everyone I talk to that collects has that sort of eBay horror story, right? And I've always been very fortunate. I've never really had too many issues. Anything that's ever arrived slightly damaged or not quite as described. Um, I've usually had like a partial refund or been re refunded by the apologetic seller. And uh, that's pretty much been that. You chalk it off as it is what it is. You move on about your day. <sighs> that all changed <laughs> very recently. So this is what I've been alluding to. Um, all vlog, really, because I've been waiting for uh, confirmation so I could sort of round off the storyline, which I got this morning. So basically, um, there's a collector's edition for the 360 that's been my number one target. Ever since I got the Bioshock collector's edition, this is the one that I wanted. I actually saw this on a video, I think it was Jim Corbana, shout out to Jim, I'll put his link in the description below. He picked this up at a car boot for a ridiculously cheap price, like a couple of quid. And ever since I saw that, I thought, wow, that's perfect for my Xbox 360 collection, right? Same height as the game, it's got a window in it, you can see the figure inside, you know the drill by now. So uh, I thought, right, I'm going to get that at some point. I saw it at the Leeds Retro Gaming Market. I remember I was with Theo and I saw it and I was like, oh, 50 quid, I'm having that. But it wasn't 50 quid, it was 150 quid, which was just ridiculously priced. But you don't really see it that often. It's a game which has a couple of collector's editions and you see a different variant more often, but we'll get to that in a minute. Anyway, uh, I was watching one on eBay. There wasn't many pictures. It's one of them. You know when you see something on eBay where you think this person doesn't sell or not eBay too often? There wasn't many pictures. The description wasn't like very detailed. Um, all the feedback was positive, although there wasn't much feedback. Um, I thought, you know what? Like It looked, so, it looked like it had been taken on an iPhone 2. <laughs> it was a very blurred, um, let's just say, low-res pictures. But they looked okay on the pictures. So... I entered a bid that if I won it, it would be very cheap. I won it. I got it for like, I think it was like £35 plus postage. I was under £40 all in. I was well happy with that. A few minutes later, before this item had even been sent, before I'd barely even registered that I'd paid for it, a red flag started straight away. Not red flags, but the first warnings that there might be some sort of issue going on here. Um, so I got an email from a message via Facebook. 
I got a message via eBay from the guy basically saying that he's had uh, some weird message come up saying that he needed to verify my address. My address didn't match the address that was on PayPal or something like that, which is news to me. And there's no reason why the addresses shouldn't match up, but whatever. So I said, so he said, oh, can you confirm the address? And you know, when people are sort of talking in text type, again, I'm not going to hold that against him, right? <laughs> and it's only because of how this progressed that I look back on it now. But uh, yeah, it wasn't exactly a full flowing conversation, shall we say. So he said to me, like, can you confirm the address? So I said, yes. And I told him the number and the name of the street and the postcode, which I think to most citizens is enough of an address. And his reply was, oh, so not da -da 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 the full address. And at this point, I'm thinking, well, yeah, obviously it's the full address. But I was just confirming that it is that address by the number, the postcode. <sighs> oh, <sir. laughs> anyway, that was the first thing I thought, well, that's a bit odd. Anyway, move on. Right. So confirm the address after about eight messages going backwards and forwards. Anyway, eventually this thing turns up. Um, I had a notification to say it had been left. It's OK. It was sat outside my house in a Sainsbury's carrier bag and a bin liner. So the most stringent of protection on this cardboard protectors, uh, collector's edition. I mean, I knew looking at it, I thought there's no way this has arrived in good condition. So I got in the house, um, didn't even want to wait, sort of open it on camera or anything, do it for the vlog. Cut it open, looked at it. Unsurprisingly, the box is all battered. So anyway. The collector's edition itself is the Fallout 3 one, which comes with the vault power armor. Now, as you can see, it got battered in the in the bag. I've actually tried to straighten this out a little bit. I think it looked worse than this at the time. Um, all very beat up, very beat up here, right on the front. Just generally what you'd expect if you sent a cardboard collector's edition through the Royal Mail Network in a carrier bag. So... <clears throat> Uh, and just to quickly recap what I was saying before, the one you usually see, I think, is the lunchbox edition. There's like a metal lunchbox, and you see that one quite often. This is the one that I wanted because it's smaller. You don't see it as often. So anyway, so I've opened it up. It's all battered. This corner's battered as well, look. And obviously, disappointed, but it was felt inevitable. <clears throat> so I've messaged him, and I've said, look, mate, you've sent it in a carrier bag. You know, I'm still being polite, obviously. I said, you've sent it in a carrier bag. It's insufficient packaging, unsurprisingly. The box is destroyed. Uh, I'm going to have to seek a refund, I'm afraid. And you know when people just, you can tell straight away, it was just ultra defensive. What are you talking about? I always send things like that. I've never had a problem. And I'm like, you've sent a cardboard box in the carrier bag. Do you know what I mean? And I knew the way it was going then. He wasn't having it. I sent him pictures as clear as day, right? Like you guys are seeing on screen now, this damage. And he was trying to act like he wasn't seeing any damage. There's nothing wrong with it. I don't know if he's one of the people that doesn't like have any notion that the box is important, right? On a collector's edition, like as if I was just buying this figure. So anyway, and then I've noticed as I'm looking in it, there's not even a game in it. Now, if this had arrived in good condition, I wouldn't care if there wasn't a game because the game's cheap, right? I own the game. I can just chuck it in the back. Don't really care, it wouldn't bother me. But obviously at this point, I'm using that as a bit of a leverage because I'm even saying to him, well, there's not even a game in here, mate. And <laughs> this is the killer, right? He said to me, I never said there was a game. <laughs> it's not your job to tell me to say that there is a game. You should be telling me that there isn't a game, obviously. And all of this was listed as new condition. Honestly, at the time I was fuming, I made a video straight away for the Gatto gang, just so they could get like my initial sort of like reaction to this madness. So he, his impression was that because he didn't say that the game was included in this new collector's edition, I shouldn't assume that there was a game. Anyway, so you can get the gist of where this was going. And uh, you know, there's that saying that if you idiot argue with idiots from afar, it's difficult to tell who's who. But I was trying my best to do some sort of communication with him, but I just did not want to get into a debate with this guy who clearly, let's just try and say it nicely, um, it wasn't debate worthy. There was no point. It was like, I might as well talk to the brick wall. So I said to him, look, you're clearly not interested. I'm going to have to open a case. And he was still going on. I just left him to it. So I opened a case with eBay um, and then you know, you have to wait a certain amount of days before you can then request them to step in. And that's what I've been waiting for. So what happened was I asked eBay to step in. Unsurprisingly, they gave me the full refund. Um, so he should have just accepted the return because then he could have had his item back and I'd have got my money back. But as it is, I've got the item and the money because of the way in which it transpired. So 
long story short, I've now got a beat up Fallout 3. Now, I, this is free at this point, so I'm going to try and fix it up. Um, I can try an eye in it maybe, I'll buy a game, I'll stick a game in it. The way I see it is, worst case scenario, I can display it this side. This is really nice artwork anyway, and it's like the same height as the game, so it'd be a nice display with everything else. I'm probably fast running out of room in my Xbox 360 area anyway. Uh, we're going to get to that in a moment. But uh, yeah, I don't think I'll ever be able to play it this way, even once I've tried to fix it up. But maybe that's the way forward, right? I think that looks pretty cool anyway. I love this artwork of the, the uh, vault armor. It's been a long time since I've played it. Power armor, I think. So, that is my eBay saga. But what it does mean is... We've got all this stuff now to add to the 360 area. So that's what we're gonna do now. We're gonna revamp the 360 area once more. And uh, yeah, let's do that. Breathe. Okay, so that is the Xbox 360 area revamped. I'll show you the biggest movers and shakers. So up here we had the Tekken game. Now, there's a gap here because on that Wednesday video I've got coming up, there may be another 360 item which will be going somewhere in and around that area, but more about that on Wednesday. Um, the Fallout 3 has got in really nicely here. I will take this out and try and fix it up um, probably on next week's vlog, which is shaping up to be a stacked vlog. Um, but I'll probably try and fix this up when I fix up those um, Super Nintendo uh, boxes that I purchased uh, earlier in the week as well. But for now, um, it does fit in quite nicely. Uh, Halo Reach has moved to here by the Metal Mortal Kombat because uh, the Splinter Cell Conviction Special Edition has gone nicely. So the bottom shelf's looking pretty good. That's where Tekken's gone in. I've not been able to keep Dragon Ball forward facing, but obviously as the collection grows, um, and I've got more and more collector's editions in here. I'll be able to have less and less forward-facing um, games and steelbooks and that kind of thing, which is absolutely fine. I think after Wednesday, when we get this new collector's edition put in, that's the last time we'll be able to keep the Xbox One games here. I think these are ultimately going to have to come out to make room for future Xbox 360 editions because I'm really enjoying collecting for the 360 at the moment, obviously. But... I don't really want to expand beyond this area so it doesn't really give me too much uh, room to play with so yeah we'll definitely be taking xbox one games out next time we revamp this but uh, as always uh, i'm really happy with it i think i can say the phrase looking better than ever and uh, yeah man happy with that and guys i think that's gonna pretty much do it ah, sit down for this week's ghetto vlog so uh just a couple of things to go through before we get out of here I forgot, with all the madness of going away last weekend, to mention the winner of the Uncharted games that I gave away. So the winner is on screen now. Drop me a message, I'll get those games sent out to you. Also, a quick update on the items that I found at the Leeds Retro Game Market. I've still not had anybody claim them. The, um, the chap whose stall it was messaged me, um, and he says he thinks... He, uh, he gave me a loose description as to whom it was that he thinks he sold them to. Um, so please continue trying to spread the message. Let's try and get these items back to their owners. Um, because as I say, thus far, I've not had anybody come forward, unfortunately. But um, make sure you are keeping it locked to the retro ghetto because, yeah, Wednesday's video, my vintage gamer trip. Not only is it the most expensive trip I've ever had to a video game store, not only have I bought the most expensive item I think I've ever bought, it's also big, so we're going to have uh, a lot of rearranging to do here in the 3.0 to, to accommodate said item. Uh, at the moment, it's still packaged up out of the way and keeping it off camera, but I cannot wait to get into it. Um, but anyway, enough about that. We'll get into that more on Wednesday. 
I think this has probably been quite a long vlog. I know we had the big Wii segments. Let me know if you enjoyed that, if you want to see some more of me sort of trying out games going forwards. But as always, massive thank you for everyone that's taken the time to watch. Let me know if you've watched to the end. And uh, yeah, play your games. Keep it retro. If you're not already subscribed, please consider doing so. I'll see you on the next one. Take care. Retro Ghetto. <laughs> Knock into the retro ghetto. Oh.